What's going on everyone? Vito here from MiniWordMeans.com and welcome back to another episode of Vito the Vito. I've got David in here with me and we are going to be playing 1600 points of the Goat Moo people versus the Snake people. That's right, Beasts of Chaos versus Daughters of Cain. If you'd like to be in David's spot, please go to MiniWordMeans.com slash challenge for all those deets. But until then, let's take a look at the board and those armies. And now taking a look at 1,600 points of Daughters of Cain. I'm running a variation of my normal, I won't say normal, but a list that I normally take of Temple Nest with my Daughters of Cain. Uh, so like I said, Temple Nest, which will be my general two units here of uh, blood stalkers and three units of uh, blood sisters. So the way Temple Nest works is anytime David strikes one of my units from Temple Nest, anytime he rolls a hit roll of a one, that one of those units will suffer a mortal wound in retaliation. For my general, I will be running a Blood Rack Medusa. For her relic, she will be running the Shadow Stone. What the Shadow Stone allows me to do is I can reroll ones for casting, and in addition, I get to add one to casting for law for my shadow spells. And for her shadow spell, she will be running Mind Razor. And with Mind, Ra Mind Razor, it's a casting value of seven. If I successfully get it off, it's minus one rend in addition to any rend that the unit has. And if the target's bravery is lower than mine, the damage counts as two. Moving on to the rest of my army, I do have a Slaughter Queen on Cauldron of Blood. Uh, I do have an extra relic on her. So with her, she's gonna be running the Blood Sigil, which means she knows one additional prayer. And those prayers that she's gonna be running is Catechism of Murder and the Martyr's Sacrifice. I'm gonna be running another person on Cauldron of Blood, which will be the Hag Queen. And for her prayer, she's gonna be running the Blessing of Cain. And I should mention that the cult that I'm gonna be running, I've been really enjoying the cult so far, and it's gonna be the Calborn. So with the Calborn, which has to go on my general, uh, any unit that is within seven inches of the general and more than three inches away from the enemy, I can pick a infantry unit, which is essentially everything that you see here, minus the two cauldrons, I can teleport them anywhere on the board more than nine inches away from an enemy unit. And I can do that in the hero phase start of turn one. So that's pretty cool with Calborn and the Mistress of Illusion special ability. And that's going to be 1600 points of Daughters of Cain. Taking a look now at 1600 points of Beasts of Chaos. David, where would you like to start? So this army is from the Gave Spawn Great Fray, Great Fray, which means that every time you kill one of my characters on a 2+, plus, he will turn into a Chaos Spawn that must be deployed within 6 inches of the character, and there's no restriction on him having to be 3 inches away from enemy models. And that's on a 2+, plus? That's on a 2+, plus. <laughs> every that's time awesome. you kill a character. Um, the second gimmick that comes with that is, for a command point, any unit wholly within 12 of a Chaos Spawn can gain plus 1 attack on all of its weapon profiles. Um, the relic that I must take as a result of this is the Gnarl Blade, which gives plus two damage to a single melee weapon, which is on that Beast Lord right there. The downside is every one he rolls to hit, it generates a mortal wound onto himself. But because he's dual wielding, he gets to reroll once to hit. Uh, my battle line are three units of ten gores with sword and board. They got their banners and their horns, which means that they get to run and charge, and add plus one to their runs and pylons. They have a really nice four-inch pylon. In the back, we have a single 40-man blob of Ungor Raiders with 40 bows. Having a four, more than 30 models in the unit lets me reroll ones and twos to hit with the bows. Having horns and banners lets them run and charge. In the back, we have a Gorgon, which is the one behemoth this army has right now. Uh, he hits things real hard and eats them. Of note, he can, on after he attacks, on a, on a d6 roll of the wounds characteristic or higher of an enemy model, he can just immediately eat it. Um, which can be really good for disrupting uh, unit coherency. Next to him is a Zangor Shaman on disc. Uh, his big gimmick is he gives a unit of Enlightened Holy within 12 of him, plus one to hit with their spears and beaks. Next to him is our ally, a Chaos Sorcerer Lord on a steed. 
Um, his spell is Demonic Empowerment. A unit within 10 inches gains the ability to reroll once to hit, once to wound, and once to their saves. And it only casts on a 5+. plus. At the very back, we have our massive Herdstone. It has a 6-inch aura, which reduces any enemy unit within 6 inches of it. Its armor saved by 1. And any Beast of Chaos unit wholly within 6 automatically passes Battleshock tests. The nice part is every turn, the aura range of the aura increases by 6 inches. Next to him is the, Sha is the Shagoth, also known as Shaggy. Um, he knows the spell Ice Shard Blizzard, which enables him to pick a unit within 21 inches, and that unit uh, moves at half speed, charges at half speed, and runs at half speed. Uh, he also is my general with the Gave Spawn uh, Command trait, which lets him dispel an extra spell. Next to him is our Great Bray Shaman. He enables the any Beast of Chaos unit within 12 inches of him that is also Bray Herd to move an extra 3 inches, enabling units like the Enlightened to go up to 19 inches a turn. And there's the Enlightened, who hit like monster trucks, fly at the speed of sound, and uh, only have a 5-up save, so they die to a sneeze, a stiff breeze. <laughs> and that's going to be 1,600 points of beautifully painted Beast of Chaos. This is the board that we are going to be playing on today. The mat itself is from GameMat.eu. All of the buildings here, these are from Adam from Greenleaf Terrain. The sprinkling of trees, those are from Foreground. And these really cool obelisks stash, I guess you can call them hearthstones. Those are from Gale Force 9. And our narrative for today's bat rap. I suppose that this was, this used to be a town that was uh, slowly occupied by villages, or by villagers of some unknown um, village, town, whatnot. Um, and then it was slowly occupied by the beasts of chaos. They came, they slowly started erecting these herd stones all over and these monuments to chaos. Uh, the daughters of Cain, they decided, hey, what a perfect place to erect a new temple, a new temple nest. Uh, but first, they got to get rid of the Beast of Chaos, these pesky goat, goat people. So uh, a battle is sure to ensue. All right, everyone, we are all set up for the relocation orb. The way this works is there is one objective set up right in the middle of the board. And we're, we've decided to use this last villager uh, who has all these scrolls. It's all the documentation uh, of all the deeds. And not the deeds is all the good work, but actually the deeds of all the buildings and everything. All the recorded history of this town. And uh, we're going to be fighting over him. The beastmen, they want to go and kill him, whereas the uh, witch elves, or not the witch elves, but the daughters of Cain, they want to rescue him. Uh, maybe for, not for because they're good guys, but for their own nefarious ends. The Daughters of Cain, they're, uh, they've always been a weird bunch. Not because they're the good guys per, per se, but they're always uh, working towards their own ends. Well, there's nothing altruistic about paperwork. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes, we're, we're working for the relocation order. So the way this works is, yeah, one objective right in the middle of the board, and then I believe it's at the beginning of the turn or at the end of the turn? Yeah. At the end of the round, we roll a die, and then the reload of this orb, it actually kind of shifts all around the board, and then we're essentially chasing after this orb. The way I've currently set up right now is I have some blood stalkers right here on my left flank, a whole line of blood sisters right in the middle, two cauldrons with my general, and then my last unit right here of stalkers on my right flank. As you do, what or how have you deployed? Uh, I've deployed the Enlightened on the flank. Hopefully going to get some quick kills in with them. Uh, the Gorgon is on that same flank. I'm quite terrified of the shooting as my armor save against the shooting is terrible across the board. Uh, we have some Gores playing point defense for the Shagoth, who is my uh, the linchpin of my summoning. And uh, 40 Ungore Raiders are hiding in reserves along with 10 more Gores to keep them company. Yeah. And there uh, should also be mentioned that wizards and anyone with an artifact of power counts as being 20 models strong in terms of holding the objective. At the current moment right now, I finished the deploying first as I only had three drops. Um, so I have the choice of who will be going first. Uh, as I do have more shooting, 
You know what? I think I'm going to take the first turn. I might go for a little bit of Alpha Strike, try to weaken up these uh, these Zangors. So we're going to go into Daughters of Cain, turn number one. Starting my hero phase, I don't really think it makes sense to teleport anybody right now using the Mistress of Illusion ability. So what I will do is this Hag Queen will have this unit right here drink from the Witch's Brew being within three inches. So this unit here is immune to Battle Shock and they get to reroll all their failed wound saves. I think starting, I'm going to start with my Hmm, you know what? She's going to pray and we're going to put the Blessing of Cain onto this unit over here being within 14 inches. It goes off on a 3+, plus, which we fail with a 2, so that does not go off. She can pray twice. So you know what? Let's try to make the Avatar come to life. Uh, that's on a 3+. Plus. And we fail with a 1, so that actually means that she takes a mortal wound going down to 12 wounds remaining. I suppose we'll go with my Slaughter Queen on the Cauldron of Blood. Uh, we'll put Catechism of Murder on the... You know what, let's put it on this unit right over here. Uh, we are looking for a 3+, plus, which we do get it off. So any rolls of 6s to hit will count as 2 hits. And then for her last prayer, she's going to be putting the Martyr's Sacrifice on this unit as well. On a 3+, plus. oh, we fail with a 2. And for my General now, she's going to be casting Mind Razor, and then we're going to be putting it on this unit right over here, the one that has Catechism of Murder off. Uh, we're looking for a 7. I get to reroll one, and I get to add plus 1 to this. Ooh, so it goes off on an 11. All right, my Shagoth will attempt to dispel. Uh, rolls a seven, so yeah. no. So they are now mind razored. Jumping into my movements phase now, we're gonna start with the super buffed unit of uh, Blood Sisters. They're just gonna move their eight inches right to here. The other unit of Blood Sisters being aggressive as well and moving eight right to here. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Be aggressive. My shrine is gonna back up behind them. My Blood Sisters over here, we're just going to go right like this. And my Hay Queen, she's going to turn around and drive right to here. My General, she's going to slither her way to here. And for my Blood Stalkers, we need to get these guys into a better range, so they're just going to go their 8 inches this way. And speaking of those ladies, we're going to jump into the shooting phase now. They're going to be firing their bows into these goat people. Uh, we're going to start off with the champion. She hits on a 2+, plus, but if I roll a 5, it counts as a mortal wound. So we're going to take one mortal wound. Everyone else on 3s, 6s are mortal wounds. So you're going to be taking two mortal wounds. We have two hits. We're looking for 3s to wound. Taking one hit at minus one. So my five up armor save goes to a six up, and I fail it, so one more goat goes down. So three goats in total go down. Next, we're gonna shift on over to my right flank, and we're gonna be firing my blood sisters, and they will be targeting those Zangor Shaman. No, sorry, not Zangor Shaman, they're just Zangor Enlightened. They are danger, danger. Uh, the champion hitting on a two plus. Hit, we got a hit, everyone else on threes. Oh, okay, we're getting four hits. Looking for threes to wound. Getting three wounds at minus one. So my five up goes to a six up again. Uh, fail, fail two, pass one. So they go down to two out of four wounds. All right, let's go into the charge phase now. Let's, you know what, let's go for it. Uh, go broke or go home. The super buffed unit of witch elves, on witch elves, uh, blood sisters, they're gonna be declaring a charge. I think we need a 10. Hooah. Hmm, getting a nine. It's close. You know what? I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend a command point to uh, to reroll that because hey, why not? What else am I going to spend my command points on? Huzzah! No, it got even worse. Uh, that's going to be the end of my turn. So at the end of my turn, I will be scoring just one victory point. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll take the one victory point. So let's now go into Beasts of Chaos, turn number one, where I am sure 
to receive some charges. <laughs> but before we do that, uh, we do have some battle shock to do. Uh, normally, they would be taking battle shock at the moment, but as they are wholly within six of the herd stone, they automatically pass their battle shock test. Wonderful, wonderful. So now let's go into Beasts of Chaos turn number one. Going into the hero phase now, where would you like to start? So at the top of the hero phase, I gain a command point for showing up and a primordial call point for having a herdstone. My Shagoth will get to ride the lightning for d6 inches. He gets a free six inch move, which he'll just use to scooch on up nice and close. And get real cuddly up there. Um, moving on, uh, we're going to actually start casting some spells. Over here, we're going to have this summon, see if he's in range to cast um, Vicious Strangle Thorns. So I pick up a piece of terrain, wholly within 24 of him, which I believe this gigantic and lovely rock is, and any unit within 3 inches of it takes d3 mortal wounds. So I'm going to roll the cast, and he fails with a 5. This sorcerer over here is going to activate the demonic power spell on this organ, letting him reroll once to hit, and once to wound, and once to a save. He rolls a three and fails miserably, but he will use his oracular visions ability, which allows them, Gorgon, to just reroll ones to his saves. Uh, and it is a spell, it's just an innate ability he has. Fair enough. Hmm. We're going to scooch over here to the Shagoth now. He is going to uh, lop off some vital organs and throw a chunk of himself onto the Herdstone for extra primordial call points. So he takes three mortal wounds, Ooh, geez. bringing me up to four primordial call points, which is that sweet spot for summoning Ungors and Chaos Spawn. Um, and he will have seven wounds left. Now the Shagoth is also going to cast a spell. Um, he's going to cast on himself uh, his innate lightning bolt ability to grant himself d3 wounds healed and the ability to reroll all failed wound rolls until my next hero phase. Uh, and this fails on a five. It is not a very magical day for these uh, magical goats. I guess because all the pain that he just took from taking the <laughs> it's, it's distracting lopping off your own arm and throwing it into a giant poop rock. Jumping into the moving phase now. Uh, so we're going to start by, unsurprisingly, running forward very quickly and making loud whooping noises. So these beastmen over here are going to run an extra one inch, bringing them up to eight, including their banner. Whoop, 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 whoop. Just rushing around this lovely fountain and securing the drinking water that our people depend on. This poor scribe. He, he knows what he did. Backing him up, the Beast Lord's also gonna run in. Having an artifact of power, he does count as 20 models for controlling this objective. Shagoth is also gonna scooch his way on up, his eight inches. So I think that brings them both wholly with, or within six inches. So we just double checked the scenario, and while normal models do score within six, characters only count as 20 if they're within three of the low relocation arms. They gotta get real cuddly in there. Yeah, so my, both of my characters here, who both have relics, uh, so even though she's a wizard, both of them have relics, they do not count towards being towards that objective, and nor does that Shagoth. So all that we have going for us right now are uh, these models. Giving up some backup, more goats are gonna run in there. An extra six inches, putting them up to a mighty 13 inch move at this point. They are so fast, and so upset. They're just unreasonable. Ending just like so. Uh, anything else? Yeah, we're gonna move over here to the Gorgon, who's gonna run at you. He doesn't have to. He really would want to though. Fair enough. I mean, it's. It feels in character for him. Right, right, right. Uh, this wizard is going to go run behind this rock and desperately pray that he doesn't get shot to death. Um, he's a lover, not a fighter, hence the Marcus Lanesh on his shoulder pad. Um, his friendly neighborhood shaman will also run up next to him and also hide behind this rock. It's a very nice rock. And the enlightened are going to move their full 19 inches on account of that Bray shaman being there, landing just three inches away from these angry snake ladies for some sweet, sweet vengeance. All right, now the Zangor Shaman on a disc also gets to move 19 inches, and he's also going to zip his way all the way over here, keeping up with his buddies. And now that it's the end of my moving phase, I'm going to bring on my ambushers and potentially do some summoning. Uh, 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 I mean... Surprise! <laughs> There's goats! Yeah, 40 of them uh, in my back lines about to... Uh... I, you know what? I guess we're going to fight in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping in the shooting phase now, uh, where would you like to start? Uh, the one and only unit that can shoot you at the moment, it's going to be those 40 Ungor Raiders 
shooting the ever living snot out of those snake ladies. Alrighty. So how many, uh, 40 shots? 40 shots, hitting on fours, re-rolling ones and twos, on account of there being more than 30 models in that unit. Here we go. Hmm. It's a lot of ones and twos. I'm really glad I'm re-rolling these, because these could all be mortal wounds. And here comes the re-roll. Nice big fistful of dice. Oh, okay. Lots of fours and fives in there. Pretty decent. We got 22 hits. Slightly above average. Can we repeat it with the wound rolls? Winning on fours. 12 wounding hits. I am within range of a blood shield, which boosts my save up by one. So I have a four up save. Followed by my six up fanatical faith save roll. I'm gonna lose two and one will take a wound. Ah, we'll lose this lady and she will take a wound. All right, so now we're going into the charge phase as that was all my shooting. We're gonna get a nice, quick three inch charge here from the Enlightened into the Angry Snake Ladies with bows. Uh, that is a four, which is barely in. So they're gonna scooch their way into there. Just get real cuddly. This Angry Shaman will also fly his way in there, moving a mighty eight inches, and he'll be flying up onto this rooftop. To get, it's death from, I forget, we'll just go down here on the hill. He doesn't seem to want to go up there. So we're gonna try the Gorgon in there. He should be a little over 10 inches away from anything meaningful, but let's see what happens. Uh, that is a four. Nothing happens. He's going to sit there looking pretty, waving his hands. Going into combat, which one do you want to start with? I'm actually going to start with my shaman, oddly enough, to make you activate those witches first so that I can get some sweet rerolls on those enlightened. Okay. Um, so the shaman's got one attack with his wacky stick. Oh, he, he take a mortal wound. I do take a mortal wound. Because of temple nuts. Oh my god. That's not good. Uh, two attacks with his dagger. Uh, both miss, but no ones. And then d3 attacks with his disc of zinch. One attack. Hits on a four, and it misses! That's it for the Shaman. All right, so I guess uh, the Bloodstalkers will pile in and do their attacks. I'm gonna be putting all of my attacks actually into the Shaman, because hey, why not? Let's take out the, he's a, technically a wizard, correct? He is very much a wizard, so nothing technical about it. I'm gonna be taking off all the abilities for you to be taking um, the objective. So that's what they're gonna be going. I'm gonna be attacking with the commander and her, ooh, her sacrificial dagger, she hits on twos, getting both hits, and these are gonna be wounding on fours. Ooh, getting one. Uh, there's no rend on this. Just a five up save, he's just a flying goat. And you make it with a six. She has her blood worm, uh, she's gonna be hitting on a two, which she hits, and wounding on a three, which we fail with a one. Look at her go, and then everyone else will attack with uh, their daggers. And then everyone else hitting on threes, Oh. Mm, that is not a good roll. And looking for fours. Uh, hmm, okay, you can uh, swing away, my friend. All righty, can do. All right, so the Enlightened are going to do a quick little pile in here. Don't really need to go very much closer. First, I'm going to attack with my spears. They get three attacks apiece, and the Aviarch, who's the Indian champion, gets one extra attack. These hit on fours normally. Threes on account of the Shaman being nearby. Oh, and yeah, look at those ones. And I reroll all fail to hit rolls. <gasps> Cursor said him, but inevitable betrayal. But I can see the future. So it wasn't inevitable. Oh, okay. I took one mortal wound. I'll take that. But only one true miss outside from that. Buy that for a dollar. And then wounding on threes, re-rolling all fail two wound rolls. <laughs> it's not too bad. And that'll make four six saves at negative one. Ooh, I'm going to double check the distance here. It's 18 inches, so I'm just going to go ahead and measure that. So they are wholly within 18. Minus one, so normally I'd have a four up, but with blood shield goes to, uh, sorry, five up goes to a four up, back down to a five up save. Kya! Oh, oh. What's the damage? Two apiece. So mm -hmm. ten damage. Uh, yeah, uh, they're, they're dead. Don't you get a fill of pain save? Oh, yeah, I do. Ha! Six up fanatical face! Uh oh. Mm. Uh oh. Oh, that's. That was. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. That's oh, bad. Not very fanatical. <laughs> One is alive with one wound, but wait, there's more. There's more. So they're birdmen, which means they have beaks. They're gonna poke you in the eyes. These hit on threes as well, re-rolling all misses. Oh, hey, you take another, another one wound. That actually kills one. Hey, yeah, uh, snakes. There's wound on fives, re-rolling fail to wound rolls. Uh, that is one wound with no rend on it. Uh, four up. Oh, no, she, she dies. Your, your fanatical devotion, man. Oh, what's the damage? Just one? She dies. Okay, she's dead. Pecked to death by These are not fanatical, man. They're not. They're just so uh, so calm. Yeah, calm snakes. Calm snake ladies. Uh, leadership eight over here. I lost two. I technically cannot fail. 
Um, and then I think you're okay over there as well. Right? Uh, I'm only leadership six, and I lost a model, so oh. six one will run away. Boom. Nope, he's good. No, okay. In terms of points now, because it is our bottom of turn one, um, you actually will be scoring three victory points. It's actually beneficial to go second, I believe. So that's awesome. So you'll be getting three victory points for holding that objective. Uh, but now we have to go and see where the relocation orb moves. Run, little scribe, run! So you know what, why don't you go ahead and roll for it? All right, he is going, uh oh, nowhere. Let's try that again. A six, so let's go ahead and uh, check the result. So we can sort it and he essentially moves, ah, I don't, I'm afraid of the go people, snake people are my friends. And he teleports, boop, right over there. That's good for me, I guess. But also, pretty decent uh, spot for you. But now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we do have to do the roll-off. Uh, I do win ties. So, huzzah! Uh, five, five, ooh, and a five. Now I have to decide, do I want the double turn? But something else exciting also happens. Ooh. The Shagoth has a special rule where if we roll a double, a lightning storm crashes over the battlefield. And on a four plus, he is struck by a stray bolt of lightning and heals D3 wounds. Oh, incredible. Does he? He is not struck by a bolt of lightning. Mm, interesting. And now, that's here, all. Here's the thing, do I want the double turn? Because if I take the double turn, I'll continue to score only one point. But then, if you take it, whoops, uh, you can potentially just go ahead and charge me. Uh, but right now, I have a, I'm, excuse me, I'm in a good position where I can do some potential damage to you. Um, decisions, decisions. So you know what? Go for the pain or go for the money. You know what? Da, 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 da. Kenyo, for all my Imperial friends. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to take the double turn. All right, you're going to go first? I'm going to go first. So let's go into Daughters of Cain, turn number two. Starting my hero phase, uh, we're going to have this unit of five witch elves. Once again, drink from the witch's brew. Automatically happens. Immune to battle shock and rerolling all failed to wound rolls. Let's pray and try to make the avatar come to life on a three plus. Okay, awesome. The avatar is now alive. That's really good because the avatar can do some pretty decent damage. And then for her last prayer, she's going to make these guys reroll their failed fanatical faith save rolls with a, the blessing of Cain on a three plus. She takes another mortal wound. What are you doing? Next, the Slaughter Queen on Cauldron. She will be casting Catechism of Murder. And you know what? Let's put it on... We're going to put it on... Oh, darn. You know what? We're going to put it on this unit right over here. Uh, goes off on a 3+. plus. I take a mortal wound. You, you got to sanitize the blood cauldron. How do I sanitize blood? You cook it. You got to make blood sausages in there. Uh, it's disgusting. Uh, okay, if that's... You know what? Then we'll do... Uh, we'll have the avatar come to life on a three plus. Stop <laughs> doing that! <laughs> For her spell, she will be casting Mind Razor, and we will be putting it on. Boop, 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 boop. We'll put it on this unit right over. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Give me a second. You know what? I'm going to be putting it on this unit of five right over here. Goes off on a seven. Uh, we get it with a seven because I get plus one to my casting. The Shagoth will attempt to stop your spell. He does with an 11. Oh, uh, it's not going great. Okay, well, let's go into movement. All right, let's send the Blood Sisters on up to here. And the other one will go. Oh, I gotta make sure I'm three inches away, so that's cheating. Boop. This unit of five, they're gonna swing around now that the objective is over here. So they're just gonna swing and they're gonna go eight inches this way, trying to take out the big horde of 40. If I did get some of my spells off, uh, it would have been fantastic because I would have been a little bit more confident taking these guys out. But I think a unit of five can deal with them uh, slowly. But uh, we'll see what happens. My cauldron is gonna move right to here. My general will go to here. This unit of Blood Sisters essentially has to stay right where it is. Um, we'll go essentially right to there, where it's a three inch charge. Pretty easy for them. No question. The cauldron will go to here, I think, six inches. 
All right, I'm commuting myself all over the board, but uh, go broke or go home, I suppose. Uh, we're going to be starting in the shooting phase now, going with these three witch, or uh, sorry, blood stalkers. They're going to be firing into your. Is that your general? The Shagoth? Yeah. He is. All right, we're going to be firing into him. Uh, starting off with the uh, general, or not, sorry, not the general, the commander. She hits on a two plus. We're going to hit, and there's one else on threes. Oh, he's going to take one mortal wound. I mean, I'd rather he didn't. Oh, well, he's going to have to. Is that negotiable? No, it's not, because I rolled a six. Okay. And then everyone else will be uh, wounding on threes. Oh, and we get two at minus one. So five up armor. He passed one, fails one. So he takes one more wound. He's at half health at five damage. The reason he doesn't get a lookout, sir, is because he's actually a monster, as well as being a character. The cauldron, now the hag queen on cauldron, uh, now that the, the avatar is alive, I will be spitting hot blood with those hot lyrics uh, <laughs> into the enlightened. We have six attacks hitting on threes. Mm, okay, pretty decent. And we're going to be wounding on threes. Mm, not the best. Uh, these are going to be at minus one. Six up armor. Live, man, live. Nope, three fails. For one damage each. Oof, one guy's got a wound left. My general now, she is going to use her stare attack into this squad of 10. Everyone is within range. I roll 10 dice, because that's how many are in the squad. And for every five plus, that's how many mortal wounds that squad will take. Wah! Hmm, only one. You made one statue in the fountain. That's all of my shooting now. We're gonna go right into the charge phase. We're gonna start off with this unit here of Blood Sisters. We're looking for a seven inch charge. Wah! Oh, and we fail oh. with a six. However, I gotta check my blood rights table because we are in turn two. I think I'm allowed to re-roll my ones for charges. Yep, blood rights table, we are in turn two. I can re-roll this. Hopefully the one doesn't re-roll into a one. Oh, a four getting a nine. So these ladies are going to be charging into the big squad. Let's slither our way right into these guys. Third nine inch charge. That's everybody getting in. Huzzah! We'll start with this unit here of Blood Sisters declaring a charge. Oh, and we get an eight. All right, so we'll put them here, here, and then we'll do some balancing acts. So we're essentially attacking two squads now. The Cauldron making a charge. Ooh, getting a seven. So she's just gonna go and crash right into here. Next, we're gonna go with these Blood Sisters. They're gonna be clearing a charge. Ooh, getting a six. Yeah, six inches as, oh yeah. Easy peasy. They're in, so they're just gonna go right into this guy. Oops. There, and then this guy will go there. You know what, let's have that cauldron declare charge, why not? Ooh, getting a seven? I think. So with that, we're just gonna about phase, and crash. That's gonna be all my charges. We do have to resolve impact hits. We'll start with this cauldron right over here on a two plus. Okay, and then this unit here will solve our D3 mortal wounds for one mortal wound. No, Jerry. And then for the hag queen on cauldron on a two plus. Five, um, you know what? I am more afraid of the Enlightened, so they're gonna take D3 mortal wounds. For just one mortal wound. It's just enough to kill poor Bob over here. Oh no! He's sleepy. But oh, where he's still up there. Yeah, he's still alive. So going to the combat phase now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Gorgon, because I'm pretty sure he can swing away Merle really hard. Did you want to use all-out attack on anybody? All-out attack? That's the new stratagem from the General's Handbook. You get to reroll all once to hit in the combat phase. Hmm. For one unit, within six of a character, I think it is. You know what? I will do it, because, you know, those um, command points, they don't really get used all that often. We don't really uh, show them on the channel all that much. So I will do all-out attack for them, spend that command point, either from her or her can use it, and uh, we'll put them on the these Blood Sisters. Uh, so they'll be re-rolling ones to hit going up against the Gorgon. Starting off with the champion, she will be hitting on twos. 
uh, everything will hit, and then everybody else, it will be hitting on threes. Uh, Rerolling the ones, I hate twos. Hey, one goes into a one, not bad. <laughs> it was worth a shot. Looking for threes to wound, and I get to reroll my failed wound rolls because of the witch's brew. Uh, oh, okay, not too bad. That's actually a pretty decent hit. Whoa. And these are all going to be at minus one. Oof. All right, this man has a six plus armor save, and uh, reroll throws once, once to his saves because of oracular visions. Uh, that didn't do so hot. All right, so I passed two saves, so that's going to be seven damage. And now they have their Crystal Touch ability. The captain does it on a three up. So you'll take one mortal wound, and then everyone else does it on four ups. Ooh, so you're gonna take two more mortal wounds, so three mortal wounds in total. Are these to hit rolls? No, it just happens. Okay. So on a, yeah, to hit, boom. So we're going up to 10 wounds taken total. So they actually brought up a really good point. Uh, all out attack would benefit from the crystal touch because it is an attack and i did roll a one so i do get to re-roll this so on a four up oh you do take one more mortal wound why did i say anything because you're a gentleman and a scholar <laughs> where has that gotten me in life you know where has it gotten <laughs> it got you on mini war gaming <laughs> I, I guess you make it sound like it's a good thing i haven't been out of this room in hours <laughs> send food and help yeah please <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to start with this enlightened over here that's about to get run over by the pain train. Uh, he gets four attacks as he is the Aviarch, hitting on threes. Uh, no rerolls for him as the pain train has not fought yet. Wounding on threes with the pain stick. Two wounds, negative one to your save. Uh, I am within range of blood shield, so my save, I believe, goes now to a five up. Ooh, and I fail. Damage? Yeah, two damage. Two uh, damage. And I have my six up, fanatical faith. hoo which I don't make, so I'll take two wounds down to nine. And one more save. Oh, I thought well, it was... I wanted to do twice. Oh, right. Whoa. This is my turn. Oh, right, darn it. Take that book. Right, actually, I, so I made a mistake. I should have rolled one die, which I failed anyway, so now I got to do my two fanatical fate saves. I jumped ahead here a little bit. I apologize, everybody. Okay, so I still failed anyway, so I'm going to take four wounds in total. Yep. Yeah. So I, I do drop down to seven. Tons of stuff going on. These guys are incredible. We're not done yet though, there's more. Yeah, the beaks. So first he's gonna stab you in the eye. Peck it out. He misses. And then uh, he's going to attack you with his disc, which gets D3 attacks. Oh, very nice. Two attacks. Hitting on fours. Wounding, or er, hitting twice. Wounding on threes. Oh, that's cocked. No, 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 that, that hit. You're gonna hack on it? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, so that's one hit at negative one to your save. Ooh, five up. Oh, is just one damage? Nope, D3. Oh, you monster. They're so spicy. Three damage. Oh, three damage. Six up fanatical faith. Oh, another oh, three man. goes through. Monstrous. Down to four wounds. Ouch. You know what? Let's have some fun and let's swing uh, with these blood sisters into this big combat over here. I'm totally going to ignore the guys in the front rank screening. And because I do have a two inch reach with my glaives, I'm going to be attacking the back guys over here. You'll regret it, Vito. You'll regret it. Starting with the champion hitting on twos. She hits, but she fails with one. And then everybody else on threes. Looking for threes to wound. Oh, OK. I'll take that. These are all going to be at minus one. They get no armor save. They're a naked goat, man. So just six guys die. Just six guys die. And then I have to do my crystal touch uh, attacks into the front squad because it's only one inch. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, the champion does it on a three plus. Nope. And then everyone else on fours. Oh, so you'll take four or sorry, three mortal wounds. Uh Oh, bad touch. Three men turn to stone. All right, so we're gonna pick this squad over here that's gonna pile in and keep my characters nice and safe from those deadly, deadly witches. Uh, if that Medusa doesn't want to fight, I will not gainsay her, and she can stay three inches out. It's fine by me. So it should be one, two, three, four, five, six goats fighting in that unit. The unit champion is unfortunately out of combat. So with six attacks at one attack apiece, hitting on fours, missing twice, wounding on fours, Wounding three times, you're at negative one of your save because of danger close to the herd stone. Uh, so that will negate the save from the blood shield, so I go back up to my five up save. Whoa. You're also in cover. Oh, I am in cover. So you should have a four up. So four up. I still fail with two. Yes. Uh, one damage piece, six up fanatical faith. Oh, uh, just one snake lady dies. Wow, whoever did that gets a promotion. Boop. 
You're the top goat now. So now we go with my pick. Let's have a little bit of retaliation now with the Blood Sisters as they saw one of their own sisters die. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have three of them go into the unit that just fought, and then one will strike into the unit of seven. Starting with the unit champion, hitting on twos. That's everybody, and then everyone else on threes. Oh, okay. Mm, could have been better. Uh, we're looking for threes to wound. Oh, that is awful. Uh, minus one. So my four up save goes down to a five up. You killed one goat. That well, could have been better. Uh, they do have their crystal touch ability. Champion on a three up. You take a mortal wound and then two on fours. You take one more mortal wound, two guys die. We're gonna make a beautiful garden statue over here. And another one over here. The feng shui of this town is increasing by the minute. They're <laughs> just internal designers. That's what right. they do. Beautiful, I guess. Landscaping. We're working in tandem together. Landscaping. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then this one will be attacking to the unit of seven on threes. Oh, awful. <laughs> and this one on a three to wound. Getting one. Five up armor save. Angry goat dies. And then it's crystal touch on a four. One more, so two die. We're gonna kill these two, maybe draw that cauldron into range of a, of a beast lord. So what, then I'll just go ahead, pile in this way, and just attack the rest of the unit with my, hag or sorry, Slaughter Queen on the Chariot. You coward, get back here! She's gonna be attacking first with her Death Sword. She's got three attacks, hitting on threes. We'll get two hits, and wounding on threes, getting only one. It's gonna be a minus one. Five up armor! He lives! Oh, very nice. Next, you can go with her other sword. She has four attacks, hitting on threes, and wounding on fours. Ooh, getting two at minus one. More five-up saves. Uh-oh, they don't make that. Just two die. Pop, pop. And then the ladies on top with their sacrificial daggers. We have eight attacks, hitting on threes, and looking for fours to wound. Ooh, okay, that's pretty decent. Uh, right. We have four in there. No, um, Rend. And only one go left. He's dead. And took his buddy with him. All right, we'll do that Zangor Shaman. Let's see if he can uh, maybe kill a Blood Thronus. It's currently the only thing that hasn't attacked me yet. One attack with his staff. Misses. Two attacks with his sacrificial dagger. One hit on a five up. It wounds. No rend. Ooh, okay, I have a four up save because of Blood Shield, which I make. Good. And then finally, the disc has D3 attacks for three attacks. Hitting on fours, hits once, wounding on a three, doesn't wound. Ooh. And that's it for the shaman. The cauldron will go next with the hag queen. She's gonna be putting, hmm, I gotta say all my attacks and how they're gonna be divided. You know what, we're gonna put all the attacks into the, sh um, not the shaman, but the Zangor and Lighten, cause he's the one who can do the most damage. So let's start off with the sacrificial knives. Um, I am severely weakened, so I only get five attacks now. Hitting on threes. Ooh. Oh, okay, that is pretty good. And we're looking for fours to wound. Oh, only getting two. Much more reasonable. Five up save. He passes both. Oh, Double very beards. nice. Look at that. We have four attacks now with the Hag Queen's sword. Uh, we're looking for threes to hit, and we're looking for fours to wound. Oh, getting two at minus one. Only a six up save this time. He fills both. Taking two wounds. And now with the Avatar, the big man himself, he's got four attacks, sitting on threes. Oh, yeah, God. buddy, wounding on threes. Oh no. Okay, getting three hits. These are gonna be a minus two. No save. Three he, damage each. He is eviscerated. Boop. All right, I have no more enemies coming at me, so I'm gonna start with the Gorgon. He has three wounds left, which I believe means he only has one attack with his butchering blade. Hitting on a three. It hits, wounding on a three with happy sixes. That's a two. Then he attacks with his massive maw, hitting on a four. He hits, wounding on a four, because of how wounded he is, it wounds. So this six causes D3 mortal wounds because of ravenous blood greed. So you're taking three mortal wounds on top of taking a save at negative two. Negative one from his uh, rend and negative one because you're within 12 of the herdstone. So with that hit, uh, I have a four up save because of blood shield, so I'll have a six up save. Do you have to be holy within for the blood shield? I do, it's 18 okay. inch range. Okay. So I do fail, so I take, uh, was it three mortal wounds? So this one, so you take three mortal wounds from the ravenous blood greed and the attack itself does D6 wound damage on top of this. Oh, okay. So the attack does do only one damage. So four fanatical faith saves in total. 
which I fail of them all. So I'll lose two sisters in total. We'll lose her. Oh, no, sorry, I lied. So she has to die. So that removes her. And then, oh, hmm. You've broken your unit coherency. I have broken my unit coherency. That is a bad thing. No, that wasn't a wound. That was to signify that I had um, witch brew. Witch brew. So you know what? I'll lose these two ladies. Woo! That scared me for half a second. All right. Uh, before we finish up, at the after the Gorgon's done all of his attacks, he gets an opportunity to eat somebody with his giant mouth. Uh, he's gonna pick your unit champion because she's kind of scary. So she has two wounds. So as long as they're all equal to or above her wounds characteristic, she's gone. So I can either pick her, or I can pick the lady in the middle, break your unit coherency, and force you to lose another model. Well, funny enough, the uh, lady in the middle, that is the unit champion. Oh, is it really? Yep. All right, well, that worked out really well for me. So on a two up, she's in his belly. Ah, oh, no! Oh. Just can't get in her in the belly. She's too slippery. Is that considered an attack? No, it's just a roll. It's an ability, okay. Yeah. Whew. So switching on over now. Oh, I thought you wanted to go here. Oh, we can go over there. That's no, no, no. Fun. It's up to you. Totally. Where would you like to go? It makes no difference. So let's get, uh, I think there's only one. No, we killed the unit that was fighting over here. Yeah, here, totally dead. So we are back over there. Yeah, that's right. Wonderful. So those ten gores are going to take their four-inch pile in and wrap around these ladies. Give them a nice, cuddly beastman hug. All right. So the beastmen have piled in, trying to get a little closer to that objective. They have six men left. And, oh, sorry, seven men left, and the unit champions. Look at eight attacks total. Heading on fours. Ooh, take a mortal wound because you rolled that one. I did roll a one, so one of them will die from that. And then wounding on fours. Two wounds with no rend. Ooh, okay, I don't have anything to give me blood shield, so I go back to my five up save. Oh, I just, uh, I'm gonna have my six up fanatical faith. How fanatical are you feeling? Pretty oh, fanatical. So I'll just take one wound. All right, so these Ungors are gonna are within three, so they're gonna use their four-inch pylon from having a banner to shift the whole unit just deeper into my opponent's deployment zone, and essentially net myself a little bit of free movement. So the Ungors have moved over, and are only about five of them are in melee range, attacking with their rusty knives, hitting on fives. Oh, they're really angry. And wounding on fives. Uh, nothing, absolutely nothing happens. All right, so I lost six models, bringing me down to 34. Um, I get plus one leadership for every ten models, so I'm at leadership seven now. So I'm going to be losing d6 minus one models. So four ungores are going to run away. So those poor gores did lose four models. Oh, five models actually, because you killed one with your, uh, with your battalion ability. So their bravery five plus six is more than enough for the whole unit to just leave. And no battle shock for me. These guys are immune because of the herdstone. Uh, I will be scoring a one a victory point over here for holding that objective. Uh, I think there's a trend here if I continue, or if anyone continues to go first, they'll only be getting one. But there is a big advantage to be going second because you can potentially score a three. So with that said, let's now go into Beasts of Chaos, turn number two. Jumping into the hero phase. Or just there. All right, so first up is our Shagoth. Uh, I get a command point for showing up. I get a primordial call point for showing up, bringing me up to five, which is a happy number that lets me summon Enlightened on foot. And um, we're going to start with casting some spells. So first, uh, instead of the Shagoth, we're going to start with that Shaman on the disc over there. He has an innate spell, uh, I believe it's called the Gift of Mutation, which is just uh, an arcane missile that does d3 damage. Oh, okay. It technically rolled a 4, so he fails to cast it. He will swig his magical elixir, allowing him to cast one more spell and reroll the dice for it, and that spell will be Arcane Missile. Uh, and that is a 9 to cast. Oh, okay, game 9, eh? So it's just one mortal wound. Um, hmm. I'll let that one go off. All right. One mortal wound to the cauldron. Down to three. Does her fanatical devotion ignore it? Uh, if it's a mortal, I do. I'm allowed to. I. Hmm. You should yeah. Get it yeah. Six up. Fanatical faith. No. So I do go down to three. She's calmed down. Things. These are getting a lot more reasonable now. All right. The sorcerer lord will try to demonically empower this poor hurting gorgon uh, with a five, which is just what he needs to cast. And that gives him the buff. To reroll once to hit, once to wound, and once for saves. You know what? I am going to try and stop that one. It's gone. Yeah, with an eight. This wonderful little shaman here is going to make some lovely tendrils of atrophy come out of 
some trees. Let me get a measuring tape here to double check. So he's going to make some evil tendrils of atrophy come out of that tree and do some mortal wounds to evil snake ladies. Uh, he rolled a five, which very much fails to cast. Last spell that I'm going to attempt is going to be the Shagoth, who will attempt to heal himself D3 wounds with a lightning bolt, which he also fails to cast. Very eventful hero phase. Uh, I'm going to be doing D3 mortal wounds to uh, himself again, because he's actually the only model within three to generate more primordial call points. Uh, he's going to take two more, bringing him up to seven and bringing me up to seven primordial call points. And that'll be all for the hero phase. Going into the movement phase now. What's it going to be, dude? Uh, I think that we're probably going to start with the easiest stuff that has to happen. Those ungors over there are going to run for their lives, but more importantly, swarm that objective. They will run an extra three inches, bringing them up to ten inches of movement. String them out just like so. Because you want to go for the objective, that's the whole intention. Uh, but you also want to make sure that you're three inches away from the Blood Sisters. So the Cauldron of Blood is moving really slowly. Uh, its aura is tiny. I'm just going to run away from it and hope that this guy will eventually become useful again later on in the game. So he is going to run an extra four inches, bringing him up to a grand total of 21 inches of movement because the Shaman's too far away for the plus three inches. So he's going to zip on over and hide in this building, saving Private Ryan style. So these wizards are also scared for their lives. There's angry witch ladies and giant cauldrons. So they're just going to run. He's going to get to go an extra four inches, bringing him up to four, to 12 with his horsey. Zipping all the way over here. And this sorcerer is also going to run for his life. He gets to go an extra three. So he's got a base of six, plus three, because he's a Brayherd unit within nine of himself. So he gets to go a grand total of 12 to run for his life. So after a little bit of debilitating, this Beast Lord will run over here his six inches and get ready to do combat with this Cauldron of Blood. Uh, the Shagoth, however, is going to unheroically run for his life uh, six whole inches, getting to go a grand total of 14, and just zip all the way to the back here uh, with his only three remaining wounds. And these gores are also going to run fall back as there is no reason to stay where they are. They get to go a total of an extra four, bringing them to 11 inches. So they're just going to fall back. So the Gorgon is going to run for his life as well, going one extra inch just enough to break that three inch unit um, combat range, because he doesn't want to just get vaporized by angry go um, snake ladies. And at the end of the movement phase, three enlightened will be summoned with seven primordial call points. Just when you, th just when you thought they were gone, they have returned. And that's it for my movement. With no guns to shoot, because my poor Ungors had to fall back to take an objective, uh, I'm going to go straight to charges. So that Beast Lord's going to charge that Cauldron of Blood. Uh, rolling a mighty nine. He's just going to zip around to the back, so that he can get as close as possible to where that objective is. Stay half an inch away. All right, so this mighty Beast Lord has six attacks, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, because he's dual wielding. So he misses once. He's also wounding on threes. Rerolling everything because he is attacking a character and he just hates heroes really badly. All right, five wounds, negative two to your save, one from his weapon and one from the herd stone. Okay, so that's going to give me a six up save. Oh, oh very nice. Oh, you make three of them. That wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, damage? Three apiece. That's six damage you need to roll a uh, fanatical devotion for. Oh boy. Whoa, can I make six up fanatical face? Oh, I make one of them, so she will take five damage. That could have gone way worse for me. So then I'm just going to go ahead and tack back. Unfortunately, the cauldron is not alive. Uh, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and attack. You know what? We'll attack with the, uh, not the Shrine Keepers, but the Witch Elves on top. We're looking for threes to hit. Okay, not too, too bad. I'm hitting four times. And looking for fours to wound. Oh, getting three. You have your full save. I have a four-up armor save. Taking two wounds. Bring me down to three. The Slaughter Queen will attack with her Blade of Cain. She has four attacks, hitting on threes. Oh, only getting two. Not the best. And we're going to be looking for fours to wound. Oh, no. nothing. All right. She's going to have her Death Sword next. Three attacks, hitting on threes. Oh, oh no! no. Brutal! We are so bad at this! 
Yeah, that was that was that was pretty bad on I think both our parts. I mean, it was better for you, but I just made my saves. But that was awful. For, I guess you know what we were not expecting it. No. Yeah, we this were not expecting that. Uh, angry little ghost should be hitting that hard. Yeah, but that's going to be end of turn two. Uh, no battle shock for me to take, and none for you as well. Uh, but in terms of points, you will absolutely be scoring this objective, bringing you up to another three points. Uh, so I think the current score right now is six to two. Yeah. Uh, so I do have something. I do have to uh, find a way to get myself back into the game. But we have to now go into the roll off. Yeah. Oh, first we move the objective. Oh, oh wait, right. We do have to move this objective. So let's go ahead. You know what? You can roll it. Since right. You are the guest, my friend. A four. A four. I think it goes even further away from the middle. So funny enough, the villager just goes 12 inches right to here. All right. He, I guess, you know what? You're scaring him so much that he just wants the protection of the snakes. But uh, the Little snake... does he know what he's in for. Yeah, exactly. I don't think he knows what he wants. Better the evil you don't know than the evil you do know, I suppose. I, I suppose you're right. But now we do have to go and see the double turn. Uh, Daughters of Cain will be rolling a two. To five. To a five. What do you want, sir? Uh, the angry goats need this turn, so they will be taking it. All right, so let's go into Beasts of Chaos, turn number three. Jumping now into Beast of Chaos hero phase. Oof, what are we gonna do, dude? So first we're gonna start with that sorcerer hiding in that building, Private Ryan style, taking a shot at that lovely cauldron over there. He's gonna try to cast the Bane of Mutation again. This time rolling a three, he fails again. Over here, this sorcerer is going to try to demonically empower the Gorgon. Uh, succeeding with a six. Hmm, you know what? That's going to boost them up, right? It is. And now that you're in, you could potentially get a good charge off. I'm going to try to stop that one. Ooh, and I don't get plus one for stopping, so that does go off. All right. He is demonically empowered, and then he will use his oracular visions on himself. All right, over to the Shagoth. Uh, he will do his ride the lightning roll to move an extra six inches in any direction he chooses. Um, I think he's quite happy just hiding behind the herdstone and being good and safe from that very angry cauldron that's looking at him. Um, magic wise, he will try to lightning bolt himself to heal up. He's hurting pretty bad. He rolls a nine to cast, so he will heal for two wounds, bringing him back down to five. He's now also rerolling all failed two wound rolls until my next hero phase, making him a little more dangerous. Um, as far as the Hearthstone is concerned, I got one Primordial Call Point back for the tart of the turn. And then the Shagoth will do D3 Mortal Wounds to these poor Gores. Uh, as I think he's too close at this point. To take three Mortal Wounds off the Gores. One, two, and three. Bringing me up, back up to four Primordial Call Points. Final spell of the phase will be Vicious v of Strangle Thorns. Uh, angry Plants, essentially, on this little pile of trees right there. Uh, that's a seven. That's what it needs to cast. I cannot stop that. So this lovely lady will take D3 mortal wounds. She'll take three mortal wounds. Ooh, ouch. And these lovely ladies will take one mortal wound. All right, so for her on a six up, Fanatical Faith, I stop none of them. And for them on a six up, ooh, nothing. They'll take one. Okay. So my general drops down to three wounds, and then she will drop down to one. All right, so we're going to start over here with the Enlightened that just showed up last turn. They're going to move their 16 inches uh, to get nice and danger close to those angry snake ladies over there. And more importantly, get cuddly with our little page. Just zoom on over. These angry little beast men are going to try to serve one more purpose before they die. They're going to run an extra six inches, bringing them up to 13. They're going to fly across the table right there. Uh, hopefully eating the brunt of those uh, Blood Sisters attacks before the Gorgon and enabling him to hopefully survive another round of combat. Uh, the Gorgon is just going to move his sad little four inches over here to try to see his, get a nice side charge there. Hopefully a little flank and action going on. These characters, on the other hand, are probably just going to keep running for their lives, snuggling their way back here towards the Herdstone to enabling me to do a little bit more summoning. Later on, if should something untoward happen to my poor Shagoth, who is going to back up 
even further away because that thing now spits blood because of the turn that it's on. At the end of the movement phase, I'm going to burn the four primordial call points I just earned to summon a single chaos spawn right there, specifically for enabling the use of the Gave Spawn command ability to buff up my Gorgon. Jumping now into the shooting phase. Those angry little goat men are going to shoot a lot of bows into a lot of angry little snake women. All right, so the Ungors are now going to shoot at some angry snake women. Uh, I'm debating which ones to shoot at, as I'm hoping the Enlightened will be able to wipe out the melee ones. Uh, so I think I'm just going to dump all my firepower into the ones with the bows. Okay. So here we go. There's still exactly 30 left, which is just what I need to reroll ones and twos. So here we are. And here are the rerolls. Oh, not too helpful. And now the Ungors are wounding on fours. Looks like I have a five up save. Ooh, that is a very poor save. Six up fanatical faith. Whoa. Mm. Uh, that's the squad. Unfortunately, they get shot to death. Pin cushions. All right, so first we're going to start off with the enlightened over here, making their three inch charge. Whoop, that is cocked. Making a four, which is barely enough to make it. They're going to zip their way over here to just gently tap, love tap the unit and then string their way out so that they aren't actually close enough to be attacked by more than one model. Playing point defense is gonna be the Ungors coming in close to keep those uh, hangry uh, Sisters of Blood from piling in too deep with their six inch charge. So they're just gonna zip on in there and tank each of them to stop from any angry pylons. And now for what might very well be a suicide run, these gores are going to charge a mighty six inches. Getting over there. And the Gorgon's going to charge in, rolling a five. And he's going to just gently love to have this lady on the side. All right, so top of the phase, I am going to spend a single command point to give the Gorgon plus one attack with all of his weapon profiles um, from the chaos spawn because I'm a Gave spawn. Uh, and then the first unit I'm going to fight with will be my Beast Lord because he's probably not going to survive if I don't. So he's got six attacks again, hitting on threes, re-rolling that one. All right, so that's five hits, wounding on threes, re-rolling everything because you are a character. That's five wounds, once again, at negative two to your save. Cool, can I do this again? Six up save. Oh, no. Oh, no, and it's two damage apiece? Three damage apiece. Three damage apiece, ouch. Oh, 12 damage, six up save, and it's dead. Ouch. Down goes the cauldron. One down, one to go. You know what, let's go with these three blood sisters. Um, I suppose we have to put one attack into the Gorgon. All right, so I figured it out. We're gonna do six attacks, because I have a two inch reach, into him, one crystal touch into him, three attacks into these guys, and then two crystal touches into them. So let's go ahead and start with the attacks into the Gorgon. We'll start with the champion first. She hits on twos, uh, and I am re-rolling ones now because of the blood rights table on turn three. We're hitting on twos. All will hit. And then the other lady, she hits on threes, uh, re-rolling the ones. So everybody is gonna hit over here. We're gonna be wounding on threes. Uh, that is everything at minus one. That's a very dead Gorgon, most likely. Six up save, we're rolling ones. Hey, and down he goes. Yeah, Gorgon is dead. <laughs> Crash. Three attacks now into these goat men, hitting on threes. Okay, getting only one, wounding on threes. Getting one at random minus one. All right, five up save. They fail, so one goat man goes down. And then we have two crystal touch attacks, which we said. Um, oh, the champion does it on a three plus, which will be a mortal wound. And then the other lady on a four plus. No. Do you get to reroll the one? I though? do get to reroll the one. Oh. So two mortal wounds. Oh, man. Next, we're going to go with the Ungors attacking the Blood Sisters. Distraction Noodle, go! So I think we're going to get two, four, six with that one inch range, but those lovely 25 mil bases. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 on Gors, attacking with their rusty shivs. All right, so 16 attacks coming at you, hitting on fives. Not terribly exciting. Uh, and these ones cause me mortal wounds, correct? Yes. All right. 
And then a few more attacks. Two wound on fives. One wound. Ooh. No rend. Uh, looking for a five up save. Does he kill one? He does! Ooh, very nice. Oh, I take a wound. Uh, your devotion. Oh, six up fanatical faith. That's right. Whoa. No, so I will be taking one wound. One actually had a wound on her, so yeah, she does die. All right, you're the new half horn, buddy. Whoever did that. All right, so next, the Blood Sisters, they're going to be attacking back. We're going to be putting two of them into the Ungors, and I'm going to be putting two of them with their two-inch reach into the Enlightened. The Enlightened are super scary, so I definitely need to be striking into them. And you know what? We'll put one Crystal Touch into the Enlightened, and then everyone else with their Crystal Touches into the Ungors. Starting with the attacks into the Enlightened, we're looking for threes to hit. Rerolling the ones. Okay, you know what? I will take it. And then we're looking for threes to wound. Oh, oh that's pretty decent. At minus one. Six up saves. Uh oh, you kill one. And deal with damage to one, leaving him with three wounds left. Uh. And then you know what? We'll go ahead and do her crystal touch, because why not? On a four up. No, no mortal wound. He lives. We then have the champion's attack going into the Ungord on twos, rerolling the ones. So Thank you very kindly. And then her buddy hitting on threes, rerolling the ones. All will hit. We are looking for threes to wound. Oh, getting a total of four hits, minus one. No saves, four Ungors just get stabbed. Following up with two crystal touch attacks on fours, just getting one with one mortal wound. So many statues. So the Enlightened are going to be striking back, doing their pile in there, keeping unit coherency as one does. Uh, the Aviarch gets four attacks with his spear, his buddy gets three, hitting on fours, rerolling all misses uh, into one more hit, and then wounding on threes, rerolling all fail to wound rolls. All right, for five saves at negative one. Okay, that's going to give me a six up save. Whoa. Oh, and that's, that's going to be 10 damage. Whew, six up. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's a squad. Good, goodbye, sweet princes, S's, whatever. And then we have one last fight to do with these two gentlemen. Go get them, boys. Go get them. Uh, they missed twice. And, and take a more loon. Jumping into the battle shock phase. Uh, let's go with this guy. He is within 18 inches of the herdstone, so he's good. Yep. Beast Lord is a one-man army. Over here, though, we lost, I believe it was four Ungor Raiders. So they're only bravery four, but there's about 26 of them left. So they're bravery six. Uh, so four plus four is eight, minus two. Two of them run away. I'll take these guys away. And then the Enlightened lost a man, and they're only bravery six. So they'll know six. One of them will also run away. He does not. No, nope, they are sticking around. In terms of points, though, you will be scoring a one victory point for holding that objective, uh, which currently brings the score right now to eight to two. Seven to two. Sorry, seven to two. You're right. I looked at the wrong thing. Uh, seven to two. Oh, brutal right now. Daughters of Cain are not looking that great, but we are going to go into Daughters of Cain turn to number three, and we can see maybe if we can score some points and do more damage. So let's go right to it, folks. Start of my hero phase, uh, what I think I'm going to do, no, what I know I'm going to do, is uh, I'm gonna use her Mistress of Illusion ability, and I'm gonna use it on herself, because she's not within three inches of an enemy unit, so she w is within seven inches of herself. She is going to essentially Nightcrawler, poof, teleport uh, nine inches away from these Enlightened to go end up right over here, nine inches away from them. Because she, because she does have an artifact, she does count, and she is a wizard, she is counting as being uh, 20 models. So I'm going to try and hope to uh, charge these guys and uh, try and go after that objective and get three victory points. Next, what she's going to do is she's going to try to cast a Mind Razor on herself, try to boost her uh, damage output. Looking for a seven, and I do get to add plus one to this because it's Lore of Shadows. Ooh, and we do get it off with a 10. My wizards are nowhere near her. She's got it. All right, she's got Mind Razor. I suppose the Hag Queen on Cauldron, she's going to go ahead and pray. She will do the Blessing of Cain 
onto this unit here of witch elves, which I mean, or not witch elves, sorry, blood sisters, uh, which will, uh, they can reroll their failed fanatical faith save rolls on a three plus. Nope, oh. so that fails. Um, the cauldron, not the cauldron, the avatar is currently alive now, being turn three. She's gonna pray for the rune of Cain. Uh, it goes off on a three plus. So she does get it off. So now her blade, instead of doing one damage, and now does D3 damage. Jumping into my movement phase, I'm gonna go ahead and run my cauldron for four, so it can go seven inches. Hangy, 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 hangy. Very slow. <laughs> Essentially, it just backs up and goes right to here. For my blood sisters, I'm hoping that I can make this charge. So I think with my blood sisters, what I will do with them is I'm just gonna run them. Uh, five oh. inches. It's a thirteen-inch run. Yeah, so I'm gonna get them. Uh, I'm gonna get them out of dodge. Uh, that's gonna put us essentially all the way right to here. So, get us sneaky ladies right out of here. So fast. Jumping into the shooting phase, um, the avatar. He'll actually shoot this one guy with the hot blood. We've got six attacks now. Duck, Jimmy, duck. Hitting on threes. Uh, Rerolling the ones. Whoa. Oh, okay. Pretty decent. Wounding on threes. Uh, these are going to be at minus one. Uh oh, he's melting! 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 He's dead. My general now. She's going to do her stare attack. Uh, we're looking for fives on these guys from causing some mortal wounds. Ooh. Oh, and he'll be taking one mortal wound. Two left. All right. Going to the charge phase now. We're gonna be charging my blood rack Medusa. Moment of truth. Whew, can't Don't you make it. it in? Come on, sweetie. I Don't need you. Don't you do it. Don't oh, you do oh. it. Don't you do it. Oh. Mm. Make it three roll the one. Oh, yeah, we do get three roll the one. Whoa. No! Oh, it's still a one! <laughs> I do need to spend a command point to re roll this. Spending that command point. Oh, boy. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, the 10! Whoa. Fantastic, wonderful, thank you so much. Cinematics. Boom, right, I, I was just gonna move your two wounds yeah, over, do that, if you don't mind. How dare you, you put that back. That was integral <laughs> to my plan. Right. <laughs> you know what, let's go with my blood sisters. They'll try and make a charge over here on the spawn. Oh, an eight? Uh, we should probably measure that one out. I lied, a seven. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely gonna measure that. Oh. oh no, that's definitely a failed charge. We're gonna be starting off into the combat phase and now with my general into the enlightened. We're gonna start with her whisper claw. She has four attacks, hitting on threes, re-rolling the ones. That's gonna hit with everything. And we're gonna be wounding on threes. Ooh, that's gonna be at everything. And now that Mind Razor is off, my leadership is higher than yours. So it's gonna be a minus one. And now these are gonna cost two damage instead of the normal one. Six up save! Uh-oh, that's a damage. Uh, yeah. They're just dead. So in hindsight, uh, because she did have that Mind Razor off, I probably should have declared that I was gonna be splitting up some of these attacks, because even though they did two damage, I probably should have known that she would have wiped them out. So I probably should have done some damage or declared some of my attacks into these guys, and I didn't. So that is my mistake. So we're not going to go back and, you know, put, say, oh, I'm going to put some of my attacks into these guys. That is not how the game works. So all of her other attacks I'm going to be declaring are now wasted. I'm going to play this game properly. So, uh, yeah, you get to go ahead and uh, pile in. All right, those Unguards are going to make a four-inch pile in and try to dogpile that man. Let's see if I can get more than 20 models within six of them to counteract the fact that you're a wizard. So after the pile in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Gungors are in range to attack with their rusty shivs. So hitting on fives. Oh no. Oh no. Oh god. They're so upset. Wounding on fives. All right, there you go. Only two wounds. Only two wounds? Only two wounds. Oh. All right. Five up save. Oh. Uh -oh. Six up fanatical faith. No. Oh, she takes two. Down to one. She goes down to one. Oh. This is not good. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of points, because we've got to figure out, so they, you know, dog pile, um, she counts as 20. We did the math of everyone within six inches of the actual objective, which is, you know, the scribe guy. I count as 20, 
There are 20, oh, 23, uh, 23 guys. guys. These four are actually not within range. So there is 19 Angors as opposed to my 20 models of her. So she, funny enough, claims that objective. We counted it three times with three different people, and 19 was the number that kept coming up. Oh, what, what a wacky thing. With her and her <laughs> one wound. What a hero. Oh, geez. So that means I'm going to be getting three victory points at uh, this turn, which now the score is now seven to five in favor of the Beasts of Chaos. I'm still down, uh, but it's still an awesome game regardless. No other battle shock to do. So now we just have to go and figure out uh, the second turn. No, no, wait! We have to figure out where their objective is going right. to go. So on a four up, it goes to the back to the dead center of the table. Yeah, so why don't you go ahead and roll up for right. it, David? Toss me a die. Oh, uh, here you go. Off we go! Where's it going? Ah, uh, no! Back to the middle! Right in the middle he goes. So, Boof, he's like, I don't like either of what's going on over here, especially the big snake lady. Off he goes! Right into the middle right of the board. The right into the well. Yep. And now we have to go into the double turn. This is going to be a very interesting double turn because if I take it, the best I can hope for is just one point, which will then bring it to six to seven. Um, but if I don't take it, the best I can hope for is then then beating it. But you know what? Let's, let's just go for it. All right, here we go. Five. To four. Yeah, four. You Ooh. have to make the choice. Yeah, i got to make the decision. I'm going to think about it for a second. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this out. Um, if I don't take the turn, she's dead. However, if I do take it, well, just with her stare attack being at 10 inches, I can kill the squad, and then with all of her other attacks, if I do get Mind Razor off again, they're pretty much dead, I think, I think. Um, and then with her ability to teleport, I can then go around and maybe grab another objective. Uh, I can maybe take this guy out? and grab the objective, I'm not entirely sure. I'm leaning on maybe taking this turn and then maybe going on late game and grabbing the objective later on. That's what I'm leaning towards, so that's where I'm gonna go. We're gonna go now into turn number four for the Daughters of Cain. Start of my hero phase, we're gonna have uh, this cauldron, the Hag Queen. She's gonna have this in here drink from uh, the Witch's Brew. So they are immune now to Battle Shock and they can reroll all failed hit rolls. Excuse me, not hit rolls, all failed wound rolls. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Blessing of Cain on this unit so they can reroll their failed Fanatical Faith roll saves. Goes off on a three plus, which I do get it off, so that's gonna be awesome for this unit. And then, do I want to risk it? Hmm. On a three plus, she's going to make her sword um, have D3 more, uh, D3 wounds, or D3 damage, I should say, instead of one. Yeah, so she is now buffed as well. And now for my general, she's going to try to cast a Mind Razor on herself. Goes off on a seven. I oh. do get to re roll the ones. Doesn't really matter. matter. But I get to do it. Hey, and a ten. Look at me go. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. She's now mine razored. Jumping into the movement phase now, Blood Sisters, they're gonna move their eight right up to the fountain. Gonna and claim the objective. And I'm gonna bring the wound with her. You know what? I'm just gonna send these Blood Sisters three inches away from this spawn. Um, just in case it does come this way, at least I can be in a quasi good position. Uh, for when the objective does decide to move around. And I can get rid of the spawn, so I decided to go with her. Wizard. Oh, do I want to go ahead? What do I want to do with you? You know what? I'm going to go ahead and advance. Or run. <laughs> One inch, but I can re-roll that. <laughs> Two. So he or she will go five inches. So with that, she just turns around and she'll go right to there. Jumping into my shooting phase now, we're gonna go with my general and her stare attack. Uh, with 10 inches, I can get everybody in that entire squad. So it's gonna be 24 guys. 24 men. So we're fishing for fives and you take mortal wounds. Oh no, that's a lot of beards. Nine mortal wounds. 
So what I'm actually gonna start doing is peeling the guys that are around her. If I can pull myself away three inches, there's a chance that she'll actually have to charge and potentially, no, but I'm not gonna be able to take enough away. Yeah. That's it. All right, next for the charge, we're gonna charge with these blood sisters into that guy. Hey guys. Ooh, nine more than enough to get them in. And they go, doing us a stabbing. And then these blood sisters here, they're gonna be declaring a charge. Ooh, Ooh. for five, I do reroll ones. Ooh. Oh, for six, that's not that great. No, six is just shy. Um, I'll go ahead and spend a command point because of the hero nearby to reroll. Nice and low, nice and low. Oh, oh the eight's eight. in. That's in. So you know what? We actually just went ahead and we checked the rule book, and I can't reroll a reroll with that command point. So it's essentially going to be a fail charge because with the rerolling of the one, I'm allowed to do that with my blood rights table, but then I can't go ahead and reroll a reroll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move these blood sisters eight inches back to where they were. So fail charge. So then I guess the only combat that we do have is my general. Oh, uh, you know what? Ah. Uh... I'm, gonna, I'm still going to stick with my general. Good call. Don't you dare try to do that with me, sir. <laughs> uh, my general is absolutely, because she's got one wound left, she's going to pile in and attack the goat people. She's got D6 attacks with her tail. For a total of three attacks. We're looking for fours to hit. Rerolling the ones. Okay, getting two. And we're looking for fours to wound. Getting only nothing. <laughs> Great. Four attacks with the Whisper Claw, hitting on threes. Rerolling the ones. Hmm, okay. Uh, looking for threes to wound. Oh, okay, so these are gonna be a minus one. Alrighty, so that's no save. So how much damage? Uh, four damage because of uh, the spell. Four dead on Gorus. No! And then she has her blood spear hitting on threes, getting two, and wounding on threes, getting two. Uh, these are gonna be a minus one, minus two, actually. They are naked. And these are going to be at a D3 plus one each. Oh, oh, so it's going to be at five, seven damage. Oh no, that's a lot of dead goats. But it might be enough to still kill her with my rusty shanks. Wait, seven you said? Yeah. Three, six, seven. Oh, okay, there's three goats left. All right, so I'm going to start over here with the spawn, and he's going to try to beat up some wacky snake ladies. Uh, so he gets two D6 attacks. If he rolls a double, he has plus one to hit and plus one to wound. Uh, that's a six for six attacks. Hitting on fours because he's an angry little monster. Oh, that was awful. Uh, that's two mortal two. wounds to you. That is temple nest. Most unfortunate. And then hitting on wounding on fours. One wound, negative one because of my massive range on the hearthstone now. Uh, 18 inch range. I'm going to double check the range for that. Sorry, uh, down to three wounds. So the blood shield ability is significantly uh, reduced. Uh, so I'm going down to a six up save which I fail, uh, damage. One damage. Uh, six up fanatical faith, which I do fail. Slap. Just one damage? Just one tentacle slap, that's it. So then we'll go ahead and attack back uh, the champion, hitting on twos, rerolling the ones. They all hit, and then her buddies will strike back with their six attacks, hitting on threes, rerolling the ones. So Everything nice. hits, wounding on threes. Oh, okay. Uh, all that, minus one. Six up save, and shock to the one, he's dead. All right, stupid goats. Moment of truth. This is the only way. They're gonna run for their lives, but will they take her down with them? All right, show me some ones. Hitting up fives. Nope, no. Nope. Okay, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's gonna be the end of combat. We are, s combat? Combat. <laughs> we are slowly but surely losing models on the board. Uh, Battle shock? They're gone. They cannot roll high enough to possibly survive. So they're just gonna run for their lives. Oosh. I will just be scoring a one victory point. I do have more models than David does over here, which will bring the current score right now to seven to six in favor of the Beast of Chaos. Oh, but we're not gonna go into Beast of Chaos, turn number four. No, we're rolling off, this is the moment. Oh yeah, you're right, oh my goodness. This is the moment of truth. So oh. first we gotta find out where that thing's going. Yeah, I went first, so it is absolutely your turn, Beast of Chaos, turn number four, everybody. Alrighty, sports fans, 
hero phase, where are we going? So, first things first, I gain another command point for showing up, a primordial call point for showing up, putting me back up to one, because I summoned that chaos spawn earlier. Clearly didn't do very much. Uh, so, Shagoth is gonna ride the lightning for a mighty three inches, zipping up close, and close to that herd stone. All right, buddy, enough hiding in the back. It's time to get to work. So over here, this Sorcerer Lord is going to cast uh, Demonic Power on the Shagoth, giving him some sweet rerolls uh, on an eight, which it succeeds. I think I'm way too far to stop it. All right, the Shagoth has been demonically empowered. So the Great Bray Shaman, who can just barely see that, uh, that Cauldron of Blood through the ruins of that building, is gonna cast Devolve, which is his innate spell. Cast on a seven. He rolls a six and fails! All right, well, so much for that. What would it have done? So what it would have done was it would have made that Cauldron of Blood move 2d6 inches closer as the straight line towards the closest enemy model, which I believe would have been my Shagoth, dragging him into far more danger. All right, so our Private Ryan hiding in that uh, clock tower over there, I know that's actually not the name of the character from the movie, um, is going to try to cast uh, Bane of Mutation on that Cauldron for d3 mortal wounds. Fails with a five! Uh, my last spell is going to be the Shagoth attempting to heal himself for d3 wounds. He rolls an 8 and successfully does so. He will heal one wound back and reroll all fail to wound rolls for until my next hero phase. Uh, the final thing I'm going to do is a little bit of a, uh, of a Hail Mary here. If I can roll a 3 on my... Uh, primordial call roll for throwing bits and pieces of myself into that herdstone, I might be able to summon another spawn or ten more ungors to flood the board with a few more bodies. All right, so the Shagoth is going to do d3 mortal wounds to himself, uh, taking only one, putting me at two primordial call points, uh, which means that I probably can't summon anything until next turn. All right, I'm running really low on bodies here, so I got to start committing to stuff. So this Shagoth is going to run up his full eight inches. Doom, 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 and start actually being useful this game, aside from being a backfield support character. All right, the Beast Lord's also going to get in on the action, running his full six inches towards those angry snake women's, staying three inches away, and more importantly, staying within three of the objectives, so that he is now worth 20 models for controlling it. Chaos Sorcerer Lord on the steed is going to run heroically three inches directly away from the path of danger into the backfield there. The Shaman will follow suit, running for his life, an extra two inches, going another 11 as well. Running as fast as his stubby little goat feet can carry him. This Shaman is gonna give up his perch and move 16 inches over here, landing in this ruined little cottage, getting ready for where that objective will finally end for maybe a heroic and eventful final turn rush. Jumping okay. into charge phase now. So the Shagoth is going to try to make that uh, sweet, sweet charge onto that Cauldron of Awesomeness. He rolls an incredible eight inches, getting him in there with ease. Doom, 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 doom. And now the Beast Lord charging into combat with an amazing seven inches to go murder himself some snake women's. Okay, uh, I'm just going to put him down here, but he has only yeah, that fountain. Instead. Heavy metal models, woo! Starting with the Beast Lord first into the Blood Sisters. He is hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Not that I needed it. Look at him go. Wounding on threes, no re-rolls of any kind here. Oh, bloody! Ah! Two wounds, negative two to your save. <laughs> okay, uh... So, what's uh, the aura on the... I think now? it's six inches, I'm gonna double check. Unfortunately, I am not wholly within six inches of my blood shield, so that's six damage total. Ouch. Uh, six of fanatical faith which I am allowed to re-roll, because I did get my spell off. Oh! So I'm going to lose two in total, because one already had a wound. So let's lose these two ladies. Well, that wasn't as good as I hoped. Okay, that is a chance now. So that means that the cauldron with the avatar who is alive will be striking next. The head queen is gonna attack with her knife. She's got four attacks, hitting on threes, re-rolling the ones. Ah, okay, only getting two. Wounding on fours. Ooh, re-rolling the ones though, because of um, blood rights table. Oh, still getting nothing, ouch. The witches with their sacrificial knives hitting on threes, re-rolling the ones. And we are going, ooh, that was a three. Uh, wounding on fours. 
Oh, getting four of them. Oh, you have your full save here. So I got a four up, re-rolling once to the save. Uh, failing two, bringing him up to seven damage taken and three wounds left. All right, and now for the Avatar himself. He's got four attacks, hitting on threes. Oh, re-rolling the ones. Okay, he's got three hits in there. We're looking for threes to wound. Oh, and these are all going to be at minus two. Brutal. Six up saves. I think this is it for the Shagoth. Can I roll three sixes? Oh! oh so wow! If I hadn't done that one primordial call point, he would be alive with a single wound. Yeah, and that does three damage to him. All right, on a two plus, he turns into a spawn. And a five, he does. Nice. All right, so that chaos spawn is going to pop out right over here. Cause he just has to be within six, and he's gonna try to finish off those witches before they can murder my poor beast lord. But that guy does go down. All right. So that chaos spawn is gonna attack now with his two d six attacks, rolling five, not too hot. Hitting on fours. Come on, buddy. There you oh, go. You take a mortal wound I for do temple nest. I do take a mortal wound. How rude. And then I'm gonna be wounding on fours. Get some hits, buddy. Oh, oh no, God. nothing. Uh oh. All right, so now that I am in base contact over here, I have to put some guys over there. So what we're gonna do is three attacks into them, three attacks into the spawn. Let's start off, you know what, let's, yeah, let's start off with uh, the Beast Lord first. We're looking for threes to hit. Oh, Ooh, getting two, re-rolling the ones. Oh, only getting two. We're looking for threes to wound. Oh, and we get to re-roll everything because of the Witch's Brew. Oh, and we get them both. That is going to be a minus one. All right, so his four-up save goes to a five-up. He is in cover, so he does get a full four-up save. Pass oh, both. very nice. Uh, we have his crystal touch for a four-up mortal wound. No! He takes a mortal wound. No bad touch. And then we have three attacks with the champion going to the spawn, hitting on threes, re-rolling the ones. Oh, we'll hit. Looking for threes to wound, re-rolling. That's going to be a three and minus one in the spawn. Only a six up save on that poor guy. He fails all three, going up to one wound left. Can you turn to touch on a three? Yeah! Oh, no. Don't, oh, I do get to reroll that, though. I thought you only rerolled once. I uh, know, because of the... Oh, you're on one. Yeah, great. Sorry. My apologies. All right. No battle shock anywhere, but you do take the objective. He's down to one wound remaining. Oh, curse that spawn. He's at two wounds? Two wounds. Oh, I thought you had down to one. Oh, no, no, harsh. No. Ah, oh, that's fun. What an annoying guy. You but you do you get mean. three victory points. The score now goes to ten to six in favor of the Beast of Chaos. Ooh, harsh. Ooh, we have to see where the objective goes. Yes, we do. All right, so go ahead and roll for it, my friend. All right. Where does he go flying off to? Number one. one. And off he goes. Running, running for his life. Ending up roughly there. And now we have to go ahead and do our roll off. Oh, five. a five, yeah. Uh, you're definitely going to want to take that double turn, I imagine. Um, honestly enough, if I force you to take the first turn, the best you can get mm -hmm. is one victory point. Yeah, which will bring me to seven. To ten. And then even if I take it, um, the best I could hope for is those three points, because then I can teleport all the way over here. Yep. I get three, yep. which will bring me to nine. This is the bottom of five, or top of five. Yeah. Um, Feels kind of bad not playing it out, though. We've got a lot of tense combats that are so close to being resolved. Yeah, so you know what? Technically speaking, I've already lost the game. Because, like I said, if I get those three points, it goes to nine to ten, essentially. Yeah. So you, you've automatically already won the game. Uh, so you know what? Even though uh, I've lost the game already, let's just play it out and see what happens because we've had some really fun things happen. So we're just gonna play this out even though I've already lost the game. All right, in that case, I will take the first turn. Let's see what I can do here. So we're gonna go into Beast of Chaos, turn um, five. Yep. So for the hero phase, I get a primordial call point for showing up, putting me to three. My shaman here is gonna punch himself in the face for Three mortal wounds, bring him down to just two wounds remaining for another three primordial call points, bringing me back up to five. Hopefully we can summon some goats with uh, with bows to do some work. I'm going to cast some spells now real quick. Uh, this guy is going to... Uh, we'll have him, first of all, cast an arcane missile at that lovely blood throne. 
Uh, rolling a seven to cast. Ooh, I don't think I'm within range to stop that, so that does go off. Just one mortal wound, but you get your awesome save. Six up. Ooh, no, and I fail. So she's down to two, I believe. All right, uh, and then back to casting. Uh, this lovely chap is going to... Honestly, probably just target those trees and try to make some tentacles happen. So let's see if we can cast that spell. He rolls a five and fails again. I don't think I've cast it successfully. Oh, I did it once. Yeah. Uh, that shaman up there hiding in that building is going to try to fire off and uh, a bane of mutation at that cauldron. See if maybe we can take her down. Does a cast. He succeeds with a seven. Ooh. Uh, I think he is within 30. Yeah, that is definitely within range. I'll try to stop that. Oh, Ooh, six. Darn, that does not go off. All right, we need to do at least oh, two mortal wounds to that throne. <laughs> two mortal wounds. And that is enough to take it. Oh, no, I do have my six up fanatical faith. Oh, oh, lives. Down to one wound remaining. So close. All right, so now we're up to the movement phase again. Beast Lord's happy where he is. That spawn, low as he is, isn't going anywhere. These guys are probably just happy not being dead, to be honest. Um, but no guts, no glory. So this sorcerer is going to fly over here and try to heroically take on a blood throne all by himself. All right, consuming my last four primordial call points, I'll summon 10 Ungors with bows to see if I can take down that Medusa. Jumping into the shooting phase now, we're gonna have these guys shooting some bows. So the half horn hits on a three plus, he does. Everybody else just hitting on fours. Whoa, whoa. okay, here we go. Only five hits, they're wounding on fours as well. Only one wound. Oh, that might do it. Moment of truth. You can reroll ones now for your saves. Oh, uh, and then re. Oh no. So uh, six up fanatical faith. Oh no. The Medusa gets an arrow right into her eyeball. Revenge of the Ungors. Uh, All right. So that Zangor shaman is going to charge in there for one final heroic combat. Rolls a four, which is just enough to make it to combat. Uh, so I'm going to start over here with the Beast Lord. He's going to go first, because uh, if he doesn't, he's probably going to die. I can't count on you whiffing your dice as well as you did before. So six attacks, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Oh, no. Hey, he takes a mortal wound. More than that. So he takes a mortal wound from you, and his weapon does a mortal wound to him as well and kills him. Oh, no. <laughs> so Why couldn't he have done that back when he was over there, when the objective was there? All right. Oh. So he is dead, but I'll finish resolving his attacks. Uh, that'll be four wounds, negative two to your save. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so, f uh, 12 fanatical devotion rolls? Uh, ouch. Six ups? Uh, oh, okay, wow, yeah, she's, uh, they're dead. And so is he. On a two up, he will turn into another chaos spawn. That's a six? He does. All right, second chaos spawn showing up within six inches. He's gonna be right there in combat with the Blood Throne while this Beast Lord falls and dies. All right, so now it's my attacks with the Cauldron. Uh, I'm gonna be putting, okay, so she's still buffed with her sword. So I'm gonna go ahead and pile in. So I'm essentially just gonna turn this thing this way. So the sword now, everyone's in base contact. So the sword will be going into this thing. The avatar will go into him and then all of the Shrine Keepers We'll be going into this guy. So let's start with the Shrine Keepers. We've got four attacks now, hitting on threes, re-rolling the ones. Okay, oh. uh, we are wounding on fours. Oh, oh no. well, okay, uh, there's two. You have your full save. Just a five up, just a five up, he's dead! Spawn down! <laughs> what? Oof. what is happening? That's one down! So now the Hag Queen, she's gonna be putting attacks into that spawn. We are hitting on threes, re-rolling the ones. So mm. Spicy. Okay, wounding on fours. Oh, getting two. These are going to be a minus one. Just a six up save. Can you do it? No, fills both. So this is uh, 2d3. Oh, oh, three damage. Not that great. Spun lives with two wounds left. But now we have the big boy avatar with his four attacks hitting on threes. Oh, getting three and wounding on threes. Rerolling the ones with three at minus two into the shaman. That is no save. He evaporates in a puff of smoke and blood. With nine damage. On a two plus, he turns into a spawn. Oh, oh one! Just flattened. Ouch. But that one spawn does get to make some retaliations back. He gets nine attacks. Oh, jeez. That, that's a spicy chaos spawn. 
Moment of truth, he gets four attacks on fours! Uh, he's not part of the battalion, right? He is not. Okay, so these don't matter, they're just awful, awful dice rolls. And then wounding on fours. One wound, <clears throat> negative one to your save from the herd stone. Oh jeez. No pressure! Okay. So what's your six up save? Oh, okay, uh, which is one damage. Six up fanatical faith. Can you do it? Can you do it? No! It uh, does go down though. Yours. Oh, so so that, I see. that's unfortunate. So, poor Hag Queen. I knew her well. She goes down. <laughs> so, at the end of the turn, all that I have left are those three Blood Sisters. And you know what? I'm calling it at that. There's really no point in going in and doing my turn now. Uh, that was fun though, I have to admit. You know what, because he, okay, you know what? They would have gone over here, made a charge, completely annihilated this thing. Absolutely, it's And super uh, cool. yeah, so, I mean, I could have even gone here and maybe charge into those guys, but uh, yeah. Roll two dice, let's see what your charge roll would have been. Humorous. Uh, roll the one? I'll roll the one. No, okay, okay. No, not no, too bad. Not too bad. They're tired, but they've had enough. They've it's had been enough. a day, it's <laughs> been a day. The final score would have ended up being 10 to six in favor of the Beasts of Chaos. What I really think was the linchpin was when that spawn ended up spawning, no pun intended, and um, I wasn't able to put all my attacks into that Beast Lord, because if I did kill that Beast Lord, that would have been denying you an extra three. That would have definitely put you right back on the map and the game would have been really tense. Yeah, because then the, the game would have been closer, I would have had more, <coughs> excuse me, more of a chance. Um, but, but yeah, there were so many moments that you just dragged the game right back in when we thought it was over, right? I mean, that nine-inch char miracle charge off that <laughs> teleportation was incredible. I also, I also think too, there was a point in the game where my general, I had her move over here, mm -hmm. and I did the stare. I honestly think instead of having her here, I should have had her run this way towards the objective, and have essentially twenty models on that objective. That's right. I don't really know if it would have made it a difference, but then she would have been closer and um, she would have been able to fight that big blob of uh, 40 better. Well, it's just such a hard call to make too, because unfortunately, our arm, my army is way better prepared for this scenario, because I have four wizards and a character with a relic, and you have one, one wizard, wizard and with two, the relic. Yeah, with the relic, exactly. And yeah. one character with a relic. Exactly. So yeah, you were a little bit more prepared for it. But I mean, we're not going to change the scenario to fit, you know, me or you better. Right? We're right. Just, we rolled for it randomly, and that is what we got. But I mean, despite that handicap, it was such a tight game. I think, yeah, that was pretty tense, pretty tight. Anyway, thank you so much, man. Thank you, Vito. That was a pretty fun game. That Everyone, awesome. uh, we hope that you enjoyed this game. And you know what, let us know down below if there's any rule mis rules mistakes that we got wrong. I actually think that if there was a rule mistake, I think we caught it fairly early. Yeah. We double checked in the book. Um, or if we caught it ourselves and then we went and we corrected it as much as we can. Yeah, I don't think we really missed very much. We, we did a pretty clean game. But yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this game. I know there's been a ton of Daughters of Cain stuff that is coming out down the pipeline, but I'm trying to change the list as much as I can. I'm actually, I said it before in a couple bad reps, <coughs> excuse me, that I'm actually selling this army. So if you are interested in it, uh, send me an email, vito at miniwargaming.com, V-I-T-O at miniwargaming.com. If you guys want it, it's up for sale. But yeah, uh, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, awesome, dude. Thank you so much for that. I'm getting the veto. You absolutely <laughs> did. And you are a gentleman and a scholar. But you everyone, well. thank you so much for playing. And as always, happy wargaming. Happy wargaming. Hey, everyone. If you enjoyed that battle, click on the link down below where Duncan and I, we are going to be playing Daughters of Cain versus the legions of a nagash where we're gonna have a ton of these zombie dragons going against um all of my daughters of came the snake people we're essentially fighting in this really cool uh reenactment here of riften from skyrim so go ahead and click that link down below to sign up for a seven day free trial it is absolutely free it costs you nothing when you do sign up, you will get not only this video, but you will get hundreds and hundreds of battle reports, all of our narrative campaigns, and thousands, yes, thousands of painting tutorials. I highly recommend it, folks. It is an awesome deal. And you know what? If you don't, you get to try the vault for 30 days, and if you do not like it, you can cancel it and get your money back 
guaranteed. So essentially you're getting a 30 day trial, 37 day trial, but I guarantee that you're gonna love it, folks. So coming into the vault, check out this bat rep and I will see you all there. And as always, happy wargaming.